Lighting is fantastic. <laughs> Um, first of all, start with these, the polls. What do you, I mean, do you put any credence in this? Do we have stuff? polls? Yeah, I haven't seen them yet. Pick eighth in both. Okay. No, I don't. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that, uh, you know, obviously there's going to be, um, I think there's teams that have returning veteran guys. You know, you got a, a Walter Payton Award candidate and a finalist from a year ago engaged. That's uh, obviously, if you got a great quarterback, you're going to probably be able to make a good run. Case Cook is being back, and, and the core receivers that they have at NAU, um, the job that Jay's done at Weber State. I mean, you can see why some of these programs are being selected where they are. Uh, but there's so many variables that go into a football season, and, and obviously we're a young team. I, I think very much this is a building year. It's funny because I think in the past I would look at it, and I had somebody tell me this when I got the job. You know, when you get a new job, it's like opening a present and you're not quite sure what's in the box. But I promise you it's never exactly what you think it's going to be. And that first year was really just truly a feeling out period. And I, I felt very fortunate to have some young men like JP and Chad and Gunner that um, I think were glue guys for us a year ago. And now we look at it and we say, okay, what, where do we go from here? And it's, it's a very, very different roster than it was a year ago. Um, we have a lot of young and some new players that we've got to kind of indoctrinate into our program, and we're going to be counting on those guys. And we're going to have some young men that, uh, that redshirted a year ago or played limited roles a year ago that are going to have to step into significant roles now. And uh, a lot of unknowns and a very, very challenging schedule. Uh, especially out of the gate when you play, you know, a Heisman candidate and a top 25 team, Pac-12 runner-up at Washington State. Uh, you turn around and you get a, a top five opponent that uh, uh, was a Missouri Valley Conference champion a year ago in South Dakota State. And then we get a chance to catch our breath and then we just roll through and play, you know, three other playoff teams from a year ago and, and two of the three on the road. And so I think it'll be, uh, uh, we'll, we'll be tested early and often. And uh, I think our season is going to come down to uh, a handful of things. And uh, one of those is going to be how we handle the adversity that's going to come our way. Does it feel different now, entering year two? I mean, just from a, a total program perspective, do you feel like uh, it's more your team, your program, your state? Yeah, I mean, I feel, I feel, I feel very much more comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think even as the year went on, I could I could feel myself evolving into the head coach role more. Mm -hmm. I think it's just natural that as a, a lifelong assistant, you're more hands on, you're more oriented towards. Uh, you know, focusing on your guys or your unit if you're calling the plays as a defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator, or whatever. And uh, for me to be able to step back and kind of evaluate things in a different way, and um, even game day, I really felt like I became more poised on game day as the year went on. I think there was some, um, I was way more reactionary early on. And I think just taking some time to take a deep breath and remind yourself that you got to keep the big picture in mind. The next play is the one that matters, is was important for me. Dip uh, turret only, I mean, most of it's about what you thought. Coming out of spring, but uh, one big impression is Matt going back to Sam. What uh, what's the thinking? Well, I think that you know Jacob Hadley, Hadley was uh, was a tremendous uh, positive surprise for us in the spring, and that was a that was a tough that was a tough loss um, in the spring game because um, I'm not sure that there's I know we would have killed to have a Sam linebacker that, that looked and moved like Jacob when I was at the University of Washington our three four system, and so uh, when he went down that changed some things for us now. Um, I don't know that that's, I mean, a lot of that is going to depend on Baloo Chapman. It's going to depend on guys like Caden Gilman, Troy Anderson, Chad Cano, some of these freshmen that are coming in that are playing the linebacker position. And, and one or two of those guys is going to have to play just for depth purposes. If they really come on in fall camp, then that might give us the luxury to slide to slide uh, Mac back to Will, which he played a ton in our nickel package anyway. So this isn't like we're going to be teaching him anything new. He can he could go play there in his sleep tomorrow and be fine. And he's a highly productive player. Sam is, is is very easy for him. He's played there for a number of years, and so I think it gives us a little bit of options with with Jacob going down. Um, like I said, I think a lot of him ending up at Sam is going to depend on Baloo and whoever that next guy up is, uh, which has got to be probably one of those freshmen. Do you feel like you can get by with the, with the McCarthy at the middle with that mic? You know, Luke has probably had as good a spring yeah, as anybody. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, yes, I'm hoping that we can. I think that, you know, he's physically what you want, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, he runs very well. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a very physical player, and he can um, – I think he did a much better job of kind of – picking up the defense in the spring. And so his comfort level's there now. That's kind of the catch-22 with these junior college guys. It's like you get a little bit out of them their junior year, and then about the time they figure it out, they're going out the door. And so I think that we've got to try to continue to build the program with the high school players or guys that have multiple years of eligibility when they come in. Everybody, there's a lot of, always a, t a lot of talk about guys embracing their senior years. Is it harder to uh, 
channel that with guys that are junior college guys? So it's kind of yeah, it's happened fast. It's kind of almost a case by case basis. Yeah. Like you know, Brandon Hayashi is a right. an example of a young man who's just I mean he's assimilated into our culture and our program uh, almost seamlessly, and and I think that he has the urgency and understands. Hey, this is my last opportunity to play college football, and I want to maximize it. And so. Um, you know, every kid's different, and they kind of mature at different rates, and and what's important to them is different. And I think that's the whole key in the recruiting process is finding kids that love the game. You addressed a few needs on the back end with junior college guys. What did you like out of the uh, Dre Carter and Jordan Henderson? Henderson team? Yeah, length and physicality. I think Dre's probably a guy that's going to end up playing. Uh, either nickel or safety, and giving us some depth there. Um, we have two senior safeties. Kahari coming off his shoulder is looking really good right now. He's over 195 pounds, which he's never been in his career. Um, Bryson McCabe had an unbelievable junior year, and I think has really set the tone for him to have a great senior year. I think he's as, as talented as any safety in the league, and he plays at a high level. And um, and then you got you know Conkle, who really emerged last year. So, but we need that extra piece, uh, hoping that maybe Benny Folsom can be the guy, take that next step for us. Dre's there as kind of insurance policy for us. And then with JoJo, he can play corner. He can play boundary corner, he can play field corner. He's long, he's athletic. Uh, he's a guy that's played at the FCS level. He's played at a high, high level in junior college, at a really good junior college in snow. And so kind of him combined with the guys we call the Thundercats, Terrell Thomas and Jalen Cole, um, they, they, they're going to have to do some stuff for us. And uh, then you, you kind of, the guys that are kind of the veterans, believe it or not, in that group, Bryce, Bryce Alley, even though he's been here a long time, hadn't played a lot of football, but did play well at the end of the year and had a good spring. And then Damian Washington, who's, uh, you know, a, a true sophomore and played quite a bit as a freshman. On the offensive side, uh, the only big surprise there is Lance McCutcheon being listed on the, on the depth chart. Do you feel like, I mean, he's had a great summer in terms of all-star games and stuff, and he looks yeah. developed physically a lot. Yeah, you just ask our guys who they like, and they mm -hmm. go, Lance. And I haven't had an opportunity to watch him, so this a lot of it's like anecdotal, but he's, you know, he, he, he chose not to play in the Shrine game after playing in the Mondack. Uh, and I think part of that was just knowing that, hey, he's going to have to play. And he's put himself in a position through the work that he's put in in the summer to, to I think, get some reps early in camp. And we'll see when the when the bullets start flying for real if he's as good as he is in seven on seven. Well, he, was, he dominated the Mondack. Yeah. Um, what, what's going to I mean? I know you guys you made so much progress on defense last year, and it seems like that's going to be a continuing trend. What's the key for you guys on offense to be able to score more points? Well, obviously diversity. You know, I mean, we've got to, uh, Chris has got to be able to push the ball down the field a little bit for us. I think our receivers got to make plays for him, too. I mean, I think that's a big deal. I felt like at times, and it's kind of one of those deals where it's like, what came first, the chicken or the egg? It's like you got one one opportunity to have, uh, maybe you're not throwing the ball at a high rate. Well, hey, somebody's got to go make a play, too. And so, you know, challenging those receivers, hey, you got to win some of those 50 50 balls for us, whether that's Herbie or, or Jabari or Lance or, or you know, even guys like, uh, like Connor Sullivan at the tight end position. So I think we've got some more weapons there. There's going to be some new guys, not just Lance, but I think Willie Patterson's a guy to keep an eye on that uh, could could do a lot of things for us out of the slot. And, um, you know, Justin's got to be able to stretch the field. When, they, when we run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, they pack it in. we got to be able to launch and make them pay. And so I think that diversity is going to be a huge piece of it. And I think the turnovers thing is, a, is obviously a, an area where um, – if, if we flip the script on those turnovers, I mean, we were minus 24 in a five-game span. That, you're not going to win a lot of football games like that. We go from number one in the FCS in turnover margin after week four to dead last after week 10. And so that's a, that's a, that's a tough recipe for success. And so making good decisions with the football, valuing the football is going to be a huge part of it. And then the last thing I think is situational football. Because we did have a lot of games that came down to there. And I would anticipate that with our style, we're going to play some tight football games. And so us to be able to manage a two-minute situation, a four-minute situation, those are going to be critical things for us. Having now that with the year as a head coach under your belt, combined with now having a quarterback as a year under his belt, do you feel like that's going to make it uh, not, not easier? But that you'll be able to manage the late game situations like that better? Well, I think we're going to be able to dial things into Chris's strengths. You know, we built a an offense around another player, and then we had to kind of switch gears, and uh, that was a, a uh, that was a big challenge. And I think that uh, when we finally just kind of scrapped some of the other stuff and just said, "Hey, this is what the kid does well. Let's let him play," uh, we were able to have some success. And uh, so, in hindsight, yeah, we probably should have done that a little sooner. But there's certain things that you have to be able to do. I mean, you got to be able to throw the ball in a two-minute situation. And Chris ended up actually operating a lot of those. You know, he had one against NAU where he actually got us in position. We had a really bad matchup with one of their defensive lineman on, a, on one of our tackles in that game and, and that ended up costing us but he put he put us in position to be able to go make that play to win the game and um, and so we just need to make sure we put him in a lot of those situations through fall camp.
You guys are young. Uh, you do have a tough schedule. But what are the internal expectations for this team? Improvement every week. I mean, you know, our, our, our mantra is compete and improve, and, and that's uh, what we have to do. Um, you know, they, it's a nameless, faceless opponent. Yes, there's, you can you can roll through all these the playoff teams and the, and the rankings and all that, but at the end of the day, y it doesn't matter. I mean, we got to go out and execute and control our control what we can control. And um, you know, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing where these guys are at. I know they put a lot of work in. I feel like their bodies look different than they did a year ago. I feel like they understand the discipline that we need. Um, you know, we may be a better team and not not win any more games. I don't know. It's, it's just the nature of it. But, but I know this: um, we take the right step week by week. We'll be a pretty good football team at the end of the year. And and you know, down the road, you know, we won't be talking about where we're at. We're eighth, whatever. That that's we'll take. It'll take care of itself if our guys continue to compete and improve. Last question for you then. Uh, after a year this week, what was your biggest maybe surprise about the big skies conference? There, you know, there's probably two things. Number one, um, you know, I had a lot of respect for the level of coaching, and that didn't change at all. I've known a lot of these guys for a long time, but there's, there's each each team seems to have at least one to one to three kind of elite guys. And you look at Eastern last year with two guys getting drafted. You look at Emmanuel Butler walk around here, and he's like the Nike mannequins, you know, and or Under Armour mannequins, my bad. And uh, um, you know that the, there's some elite guys on each you know each roster, and those matchups really define a lot of the game. And then lastly, which is obviously not a revelation, but it's it's a, it's a very much a quarterback-driven league. And and so whether that's the right guy for Cal Poly running the triple, or a guy like Gage throwing the ball around for Eastern, um, that team that has the quarterback is going to have an opportunity to win. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Appreciate. You.